Trayon, any statement you want to make? Trayon White was surrounded by supporters as he left the federal courthouse this afternoon. The Ward 8 council member said nothing as he was quickly ushered into the back of a car which then sped away. Inside the packed courtroom on the second floor, White put his hands together in prayer and thumped his chest as he acknowledged supporters. He said little other than to confirm his age and that he knew the seriousness of the charges against him. A possible sentence of 15 years in prison if convicted. D.C. Council Member Trayon White indicted federally facing 15 years in a federal prison if convicted and sentenced to the max. What's going on here? All right, we'll get into it. We'll show you how the FBI actually has tape of him. He's on hidden camera and they are making allegations about what is seen on that video. Now, let me ask you a question first. I want you to weigh in at some point. Watch the video first, but I want you to weigh in in the comments and let me know. Is politics today just a means to an end for the politician? So someone raises their hand to become elected to office. Is it the case now that they just see that by and large as a way to get rich, as a way to enrich themselves, okay? Or as a way to play some game where, you know, they get the largesse of the office, they get to run around, act act like king or queen uh, in their little fiefdom. Is that what's going on here? Because we got Latoya Cantrell down in Louisiana under allegations. Xing Tao out in Oakland. Our friend, Hood Booger, Tiffany Henyard up in Dalton, Illinois. They're even saying that the mayor of New York may be hit with some federal indictments soon. That's a rumor, but we'll see if it's true. So what's going on with these politicians? And as far as the FBI is concerned, you know, we hear a lot about them going after the local yokels, right? But what's up with Nancy Pelosi in this whole thing where, you know, it is alleged she takes information she learns about legislation and how it might affect the company and then makes in investment decisions based on that knowledge that she's privy to. That's insider trading, right? Why isn't the FBI going after her? Or Joe Biden, for example. You know, he's got some impeachable offenses that have been uncovered that says that he's enriched himself and his family at the expense of the tax-paying citizens. So why aren't, why aren't the FBI going after those big fish? Why just the little fish, right? In any event, Trayon White. Now, uh, this gentleman, as you can see, he wears the kente cloth and the braids, the whole nine yards, right? Uh, man of the people down there in D.C. And look, it's important to note, these are allegations. He's innocent until or unless he is convicted. Government's got to prove their case, right? But as we always say, when you're going up against the federal government, that is one tough nut to crack. You got to have a lot of money to go up against them. So we'll see what happens. But like I said, they've got Trayon on tape. In the 37-page criminal complaint, the FBI lays out a series of conversations a cooperating witness recorded having with the Ward 8 council members since June. Prosecutors say all of the conversations were recorded in a car, wired for video and sound. According to the documents, in one conversation with what the FBI calls a confidential human source, the source handed White an envelope with $5,000. That's for making sure you reach out to government employee 3 and government employee 4. White then says, I'm on top of all of that. You know me, I'm already moving. Once you and I lock eyes and gets to an understanding, I gets to work. I can make some expletive happen. The complaint includes photos of White allegedly taking the cash payments, which according to the FBI broke down like this. June 26th, $15,000. July 17th, $5,000. July 25th, $10,000. And August 9th, $5,000. Trayon White was arrested yesterday afternoon outside an apartment building in Southeast. This photo a neighbor shared with News 4 shows FBI agents in tactical gear next to a car White was driving. A Tesla with Ward 8 council member plates was parked outside. The FBI in its complaint states White agreed to accept $156,000 in undisclosed kickbacks and agreed to 3% payment of contract values. 
$35,000 in cash payments. White's attorney, Fred Cook, had no comment as he left the courthouse. The Ward 8 council member is due back in court September 19th. Look, guys, in any event, secret cameras, $35,000 in cash. D.C. council member Trayon White accused of bribery. Ward 8 council member Trayon White is accused of taking envelopes stuffed with cash. Quote, I don't want to feel like you got to give me something to get something. We better than that, unquote. He is alleged to have said. Then he put the envelope with the money into his jacket pocket, prosecutors say. Uh, so the documents filed in federal court on Monday describe White allegedly accepting envelopes full of cash. Uh, and we saw him on what the FBI is alleging is a hidden camera. White, who represents Ward 8, is accused of agreeing to accept $156,000 in exchange for using his position to pressure employees of the D.C. Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement and the D.C. Department of Youth Rehabilitation Services to extend several contracts, prosecutors say. He's chair of a D.C. Council Committee that oversees several agencies, including the Department of Youth Rehabilitation Services. Now, if he is convicted on this, that would mean that he was bilking the very organizations that he has promoted as being the solution to a lot of the problems in D.C., all right? Youth Rehabilitation Services. And the allegation here is that he's, you know, bribing them out of money. White accepted cash payments of $35,000 on four occasions, prosecutors say. White's office released a statement uh, a few days ago, said, quote, we recognize the serious of this matter. We want to assure Ward 8 residents that stakeholder and stakeholders that our office remains fully operational and steadfast in our commitment to serving the public, unquote. Now, I want you to notice something. If you follow the videos on this channel where we profile Tiffany Hendyard, I want you to notice how a, a difference here in how Trayon White is handling the situation. He's not out there talking himself. He's got a statement that's been released by his office addressing community concerns. He's got his attorney who is so far saying that he has no comment. And that's natural. You know, you want to get in as an attorney, I would imagine, and sort through things and, you know, not say anything that might be detrimental to the client. But White is, uh, let's just say he is observing his right to remain silent, which is very smart, okay? Um, not so much with, with a person like Tiffany Hendyard, right? She's a unique case. White appeared in a packed federal courtroom on Monday afternoon. He did not enter a plea at his initial appearance. He was largely silent during the proceedings, but said he understood the bribery charges against him uh, and he knows that it carries a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. He clasped, he folded his hands in prayer, which I would do too if I was sitting in a federal courthouse at the defendant's table. Uh, under the conditions of his release, White had to surrender his passport and any firearms. He must notify pretrial services if he plans to travel outside the D.C. area. White had no comment. Smart. On News 4 video captured the moment he left the courthouse uh, and he was ushered into a car. Ward 8, Ward 8, Ward 8 supporters chanted as White was driven away. White's lawyer also declined to comment on the case. White is due back in court on September 19th. Now, his constituents, some of them were profiled and um, many of them had positive things to say about him. All right. Apparently, he was very instrumental in making sure that the grocery store stayed in that area. That grocery store has been plagued with theft uh, and they wanted to move because they were like, hey, the game here is to make money. This is a grocery store. Our margins are pre-taxed only 2.2 percent anyway. Uh, and we're watching inventory fly out of the door. OK. 
Apparently, White sat down and was instrumental in convincing them to stay. I don't know, you know, how he accomplished that. But, you know, hey, that's a feat. All right. Um, now, the other thing I want to say is, listen, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't know this guy. I don't live in D.C. I don't vote for him. But knowing his politics, I wouldn't vote for him. But I am always cautious with regard to the FBI. Remember, the FBI is the same organization under J. Edgar Hoover, study that guy, right, who sent Martin Luther King Jr. a letter encouraging him to commit sideways. Okay, yes, the FBI did that. So uh, there, there, there was some media, some movies that came out about them, Mississippi Burning, great movie with Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe that kind of painted them in a better light, did a lot for their uh, reputation, okay, to burnish their reputation. But the fact of the matter is, in many ways, they still operate with the legacy of J. Edgar Hoover, okay? So just because someone's indicted doesn't necessarily mean that they are guilty. They do have a presumption of innocence. And now, I, look, I'm no attorney, but the video ain't looking good for the home team, in my opinion. And our stance here is that if you are paid by the taxpayers to go out and be a representative or to do any type of public work, then you are a steward of public funds, taxpayer funds. We can't decide that we're not going to pay our taxes. We are compelled to. So politicians need to be held to a very high standard when it comes to their behavior. All right. And so you might you might question, well, how did he misappropriate funds here? Well, if he was demanding payment from organizations that receive taxpayer funds, then, you know, it's pretty clear if he was indeed doing that. We're going to stay on this because this guy's very popular in D.C. OK, um, so we're definitely going to stay on this case, an FBI informant who operated Businesses that contracted with the D.C. government agreed to cooperate with authorities as part of an agreement to plead guilty to bribery and bank fraud charges. Several conversations between White and the informant were recorded in a parked car, wired for video and audio, including outside White's home, prosecutors say. At one meeting, White and the informant discussed contracts the informant had with the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. We have something like that here in Baltimore, okay? So if anybody's messing around with the money, they ought to be put on notice because apparently the feds are looking into, you know, those who intersect with these offices of neighborhood safety and engagement. The informant asked White if the contracts would be renewed and said he had $15,000 in cash. Initially, White asked, Quote, what you need me to do, man, I don't, I don't want to feel like you got to give me something to get something. We better than that, unquote. Then he tucked the envelope with the cash into his jacket pocket, prosecutors say. So he's like, hey, man, look, I don't want to feel like, you know, you're obligated to do anything as he put the money in his jacket, allegedly. In one instance, prosecutors say the informant gave White $5,000 cash in exchange for reaching out to two government employees. Quote, once you and I lock eyes and gets to an understanding, I gets to work. I can start making excrement happen, unquote, White allegedly said. Before another meeting, White allegedly instructed the informant to, quote, bring 10, unquote. The informant understood the instruction to mean he should bring $10,000 in cash. Hmm, if he's got a good lawyer, he might bring 10. I meant bring, I thought he was stopping by Dunkin' Donuts. I I wanted him to bring the donuts. What are you talking about? Bring 10. Uh, I say that to everybody. I don't, I don't want a dozen because, you know, I want to be responsible with my money. It's a recession. So just bring 10. Prosecutor might be able to make hay of that. Prosecutors say White also accept, uh, defense attorney might be able to make hay of that. Prosecutors say White also accepted gifts including travel to the Dominican Republic and Las Vegas. 
White and the informant talked about potential future contracts related to mental health services and housing, about contracts linked to mental health. White allegedly said, quote, that excrement ain't going nowhere, bro. That excrements a cash cow, unquote. <sighs> White was arrested Sunday near his home in the Navy Yard area of Southeast D.C. News 4 video shows agents outside White's apartment. Agents appeared to try to access White's car, which is a silver Tesla. Uh, ANC Commissioner Erica Green, who represents a portion of Ward 8, spoke in support of White at a virtual news conference uh, held Monday morning before information on the bribery charges were released. She said she was frustrated that residents and fellow elected officials weren't given any information on the reason for White's arrest. Well, now they have been. Quote, the public has a right to know. She's right. We're concerned about our council member, unquote. All right. Now, the mayor, Muriel Bowser, mayor of D.C., called the allegations against White very troubling. Yes. I'm sure that constituents across the city, but especially in Ward 8, are very disappointed. People need representation. They need people to go down to the Wilson building and put them first and fight for them. And I know that I speak for them in my disappointment about that. Look, uh, here's the thing. These, you, you do have a cadre of black politicians who want to trade on, you know, black aggrievement, okay? That many of these same, self-same black politicians constantly preach, all right? It's a cycle to keep them in office, basically. I maintain that the political piece, yeah, it's important, but you know what's most important? Economic power, okay? Uh, you look at other communities and they captured economic power before they went after political power. Because in America, which the United States of America is a business, in this country, it is a fact that if you have economic power, you have electoral power, even if you don't hold office, okay? We see that all the time. So these politicians who want to continue to advance black aggrievement and, uh, you know, this whole thing where, you know, we shall overcome, unless they're talking about economics, then that could be an indication that they're in it for themselves. At the worst, at the least, they just don't understand the world that we live in today. Because, to go a step further, economic power, securing that, that's a social, that's a matter for a socioeconomic class, not one ethnicity, all right? 1% of the population in this country owns over 33% of the assets, right? We need to democratize that. And the only way we start to do that is to focus on economics and not by allegedly taking bribes for one person to advance themselves economically, but for a socioeconomic class, not just one ethnicity, a socioeconomic class to understand that by and large, we've been sold a bill of goods, okay? We've been marketed to, uh, large swaths of the uh, American population have been convinced to buy liabilities instead of assets, okay? We need to change that. So I just wanted to add that because this whole thing where, you know, we're so focused on politicians and politics being the answer, no, money's, money's the answer, <laughs> okay? Uh, now, listen, I know I'm a very spiritual person. I, you know, am devout in my observation of a higher power. Uh, but the Bible says, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So I think here on this earth, when we've got to feed our families and we've got to, you know, shelter ourselves and our families, then we need to stop focusing on these self-serving politicians. And it remains to be seen as to whether or not Trayon White is one of those. But we need to stop focusing on them and getting so lathered up about politics 
and start purchasing quality assets.